A few weeks ago, I took a look at the difference between outlines and borders. Near the end of that video, I asked if people would be interested in seeing how we can animate outlines, and well yeah, a few people said they were interested. So here we are. Now there are a few limitations and little quirks, we're going to look at those as well, but I think we can do some really fun stuff with animating outlines, so let's go and see how we can do that. All right, so here we are in VS Code, and if you'd like to see this code or play with this code or get the finished version of this, there is a link down below in the description to the code pen that has everything that I'm doing right here. And you'll see that I've started with four links that we're going to turn into buttons. And just because um, I think it is worth looking at, let's just look really fast here. I've put uh, two links and two buttons with a class of BTN on there. Uh, so I'm going to style these up. If you want to skip ahead, there are chapters set up below if you just want to get to the animation part. But I do think it's always worthwhile looking at how to set this up and everything and why I'm setting things up the way I am. Um, so just here in the button class, which these are all sharing, I'm going to do a display of inline block because I do find most of the time for buttons, that is what we want to set up on there. And we'll set a cursor of pointer on those because, uh, because you know, that's if right now, if you go in here, we don't have a pointer, but if we go on that, that's the little hand guy. So you can see there it's showing up and here it's not because we want them all to look the same. We also do want them to behave the same. So by putting the cursor pointer on there, you can see that that gives me the little hand. Um, I also want to put a text decoration of none because, you know, we don't want any text decoration on them. And you'll notice like this is only for these buttons. This one's only for these. But because we're using this one class for both, which simplifies our life a lot, I do think it's worth, um, you know, having set things up like this. Uh, font size, I'm going to throw an inherit on there just because you'll notice the font is actually smaller on the buttons than here because by default buttons don't inherit now if you're using something like a reset or something this might already be included in there but i figured i'd throw that in there as well um, just for consistency too we can also throw a line height on one it can often make things a little bit easier um, and now obviously if we look at that we want a background of none because that gets rid of our background any border of i'm just going to put zero whoops border of zero because that gets rid of the borders that are on there. Uh, for the colors, you could do something like uh, color of inherit, inherit, uh, just to make sure that they're all the same. But you know, I'm going to be overwriting the button, uh, the colors as I go through on the styling of each one. So I'm not too worried about that, to be honest. All right, so let's go to button one and we'll do our first fun styling right here. And so the first thing I'll do is let's set my color to, I have this color that I have just saved off on the side. So we're gonna set my color to there, which is a bit of a blue one. We're gonna do each one a different color just so it stands out a little bit. Um, and then what we can do is we wanna come in with an outline and my outline is going to be, let's do a two pixel solid and we'll use the same color on there. So then we get something like that. And that looks kind of terrible. And it, well, it is kind of terrible, right? Now they, they all had transparent backgrounds before, so we couldn't see this, but I'm gonna come on all my buttons and give them the same padding. And we'll go with a padding of, let's try 0.75M, 1.25, let's go with a five, make it a little bigger. I find like a two to one ratio here works well, but it really depends on uh, your design and all of that. Maybe like that looks a little bit better. Cool. Um, and now what we can do, and we're going to make this a little bit more interesting, but here I have my button hover and button focus as one selector, and I've already done these just to speed things up a little bit. Um, but what we can do is we can change the outline offset. And so if I change the outline offset, let's just try doing it to like two pixels, something really small. So that just means when I hover, it goes a little bit further out and we can actually transition that. So let's do a transition of, uh, outline offset. Um, and then we can say, uh, I don't know, 250 milliseconds and we'll just do an ease on there. And there we go. We get a little animation and it moves back and it moves, you know, back and forth like that. And that's kind of cool, right? But I, I do think, you know, it's really understated. It's not very obvious. So I think where this could be a much cooler uh, and much more awesome is if we came and we did a border on here as well. And we're gonna do two pixels solid and well, actually our border, we're gonna use the same color here as well. So everything looks the same. We have the border and the outline are identical. So we end up with our border and then we end up with the outline and it looks thicker, right? It's at four pixels now instead of two pixels. Hmm, that sort of sucks. But well, what can we do? We can come in here and we can say that the outline offset is negative two pixels. And that means that the outline is being sucked in by two, which is the width of the border. And now we can't even see it. Huh, that's interesting. And now what happens, we get this cool effect. Isn't, I love that. I think that's just so much fun. <laughs> um, and we set it up so it should happen on focus as well. So if I navigate with my keyboard, you can see it's still kicking in and it's still working. 
So that is, I don't know. I just, I love little things like that. Now, if you really wanted to be creative or make your life a little bit easier, we have like a two, a two, a two, and a two here. So you could use some sort of custom property to set this all up. It could even be a locally scoped custom property um, and all of that. I'm not gonna do it for this one just to keep it focused really on what we're doing. But if you like that type of thing, um, by all means you can do it. And of course you can do a very similar thing the other way around. So actually let's copy what we have here. Uh, we'll change the colors around a little bit. I have another color that we can grab right here. So we'll just pop that into these. So our button looks a little bit different. So that should be for my button two right there. And there we go. So we get that. And as I said, we could do this the other way around. So here, what we could do instead of having an outline offset that's growing, we could come in on this one and actually have it shrink even more. Um, so in this case, what we could do is come in with a negative four. And that means this one sort of grows out that way, or we could do the same idea. Whoops, this should be a negative six, I guess. Negative six, so there is a gap there. And there we go, we end up with something like that. And then, you know, we have negative six because it's, we want that, the white border that's coming in there, that inset bordery thing that's coming in, that's two pixels wide too. And I do find for the most part that it looks best when that, you know, this offset thing is the same size as the thickness of your border. So if you're going with a thicker border, increasing that size can also look good as well. Uh, so there we go. We have two fun ones. They're very, very similar. So it's a, a couple of quick wins. Um, and I think we can come in with something a little bit different here for button three. Um, so for button three, what we're going to do is let's start by giving this one a background color. And again, I have a color saved off screen here. So let me just grab it. Um, and with a background color, we can use the same thing that we did with button two, but use it in an, a bit more of an interesting way. And of course, I want this not to be here, but to put it up here. There we go. So we get that, and I guess my color of my text should become white. So we'll do, come in with a quick FFF on there, and there we go. Um, now we're gonna look at one issue with this is because these have a border on them, they look a little bit bigger. So if ever you do have some buttons that have borders and other buttons that do not have borders, what I would suggest is actually coming in and setting a uh, border that's exactly the same, but that uses your background color. So two pixels solid, and I have, whoops, I don't need that. There we go. Um, so now at least the thickness of the buttons looks identical, which just it just balances things is things is it balances things out a little bit, makes them look a little bit nicer, I find. Um, and what we can do is we can come in with an outline on this, and the outline will be we'll stick with two pixels, but again the values here could change, and we're going to do two pixels solid, and we will come in with a FFF once again. Um, and you may be going, well, why would I want a white outline? Ah, well that's where we can come in here and let's get the same transition. I guess we could have put this transition on our button selector instead of on each one of these, but we're, we're so far in, <laughs> I'm not gonna change it. Um, so here what I can change is my outline offset and let's go in with a negative four pixels. And now what happens is you get this type of thing going on. That's kind of cool, right? And maybe a negative six would actually work better. We'll try. There we go, I think that looks a little bit more balanced again. So it's the same as that one, but instead of coming in with the color that's sucking in, we can have it come in and do something fun like that. So I think that's kind of neat and kind of fun too. So there we go, a nice little extra that we can do there. I think it's looking great. And this last one's a little bit different. So, uh, and I think this one's a lot of fun. It uses a couple of different things instead of only using the offset. So once again, I do have a color here. So we're gonna say an outline of two pixels solid 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 there we go and we can come in with that and don't forget the hashtag at the beginning uh, so we get that and i also want that to be the color of my text and again you could even use custom properties here for the colors um, and it would probably work really well because on this one we also want to come in with a border uh, that's the same so if ever you know custom properties for a few of these different things here could could speed things up and make things even easier to maintain and to set up uh, and all of that. Uh, so there we go. We get a border and that. Now again, we for this, remember when this happens, we want to set a, an outline offset offset of negative two pixels or you know, let's just change this one up actually. Let's go with a three and a three. So that means here I'd also want a negative three. I want to make sure that the offset here is matching the width of my border is the real trick on this one. Um, or even if we do, let's do a five, maybe not 35, we'll, we'll lose everything, but we could do a five just so it's a little bit different from the other ones. Um, but where we can really have fun with this one now is instead of it moving in or moving out, like we've been doing here, it's the, you know, effectively we did the same thing three times here. 
what we could do is we could have it move in. So let's say we do that outline offset becomes negative. We'll do 10 pixels. And when we do that, you can see it clicks in and out. And when we do that, we can see, uh, let's put our transition here, actually transition outline offset 250 milliseconds ease. Um, and so we can see that it is like growing in and out, which is, ah, that's kind of neat, right? I love that. I think this works well. And if you have thicker values or thicker borders, it can work really well, like these five pixels. But if we drop this back down to these twos here, um, and then this goes up to a negative four, like we're sort of limited into this little tiny growth that's not so great. I don't find that looks as nice. And so what we can do here is we can actually say the outline width is let's say eight pixels on hover. And if I save that now, look at that. I mean, it's, it's going kind of crazy. But you can see that it's changing the width of the outline. And well, guess what? <laughs> we can transition our outline offset. We can also transition uh, let's just duplicate this line actually. And I'm going to change this one. Let's put a comma here. And this one will be my offset width or outline width, I should say. Um, and now look at that. And now I'm just going to increase this. I think we want it to a negative eight. There we go. So you can get this really thick outline coming in. Right. So now there is one downside of this is outlines are not painted in the same way as other things. Uh, so you might be thinking, well, what, couldn't we do like a really big number here? And I guess you could, like you could do something like this. Um, and there's probably a way of actually getting this to work, but you know, it covers the text and it envelops everything. So couldn't we just come here and say that the color on this is now white? Um, and the problem is it, the outline's actually going on top of everything. So we can't see that white text coming in which sucks because that would be a really cool effect that we could do. But I'm really happy just coming in and doing something like this and just having this growing and shrinking like that. I don't know. I think these are some cool uh, use cases of fun things that you can do. But I do have a word of warning before you go. And that word of warning is um, there's this weird thing where let's open up Chrome and in Chrome when you do these, um, the animations aren't always as smooth. See how this one's more like jittery a little bit? as it goes in and out. Um, and this one's actually looking really nice because uh, compared to these other ones, and I played around with this a bit, and in Chrome, the outline width can be animated and you can go crazy with it, um, which does mean you can like thicken lines up too, right? So like I could come in here without changing this offset um, and we could, you know, it grows outwards and you can do that for any of them and it's always gonna be nice and smooth. Uh, but interestingly enough, on these other ones, um, Chrome, let's just change this offset here to 10 pixels and it's really big right now. I just thought of something. Let's see if this works actually. Well, I mean, even that's kind of, <laughs> that's interesting, right? Ooh, I mean, there's fun, so much fun stuff you could do with this. Um, but what if the offset stayed at 10, but then this becomes like 20? Oh, it goes the wrong way. Uh, so 10, what, so if it became zero. I mean, it, I don't know. You could play around with so much stuff here and have some fun with it. Um, but one thing that I did notice in Chrome is that, well, widths can be animated. Um, the problem is, so here it's at 10. So I'm actually going to make this 11. Um, and what I'm going to do, let's just take the width off of here for a second. And I'm going to make this at 12. So we're, when I hover on top, it's going up by one pixel. And see how it jumps there? Like it's going one to the next. And actually, let's make this 11.9. If I make this 11.9, it's not actually going to change when I hover on top. And for some reason in Chrome, it won't animate. It, won't, it can't render an outline offset except to perfectly round numbers. Uh, so here it's 11.9. It's working. If I do that up to, or it's not working. If I go up to 12, now you actually get that little difference that jumps in here. Um, which is kind of frustrating because in Firefox, it can still render that and it can still animate between. If you do like an 11.5 even, in Firefox, that should be 11.5. Um, it will, it can render these subpixel values, whereas for some reason Chrome can't, but only for the outline offset, which seems a little bit weird. It's a limitation it has. Um, so just make sure your animations aren't too slow. If you put like a two second animation on this, you're gonna see it being really jittery. Whereas if you come in with pretty fast animations, it's gonna look relatively smooth uh, no matter which browser you're in. So just keep them nice, crisp, fast animations if you're going to use something like this. 
And there we go. Now, one issue with animating anything is there can be hits on performance. So do take that into account. Um, and just like we saw that strange thing with Chrome there. But another thing that's a little bit similar to offsets is shadows, which people love to animate, but which can have huge hits on performance, which can cause some really janky animations. Now, if you'd like to see how you can prevent janky shadow animations from happening and making sure they're buttery smooth every single time, I do have a video on that. So you can check that one out. It is linked down in the description below and it's probably showing up on the screen now, or if not right now in a couple of seconds from now. And that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. A huge thank you to my patrons for their support each and every month. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.